What is it you are facing today that it seems like it will never change? Have you lost hope about it? Today you may be facing a battle in some sort of way that seems like it would never ever change. Maybe you've prayed and you've prayed and it just seems like there are no open heavens above you. It seems like your prayers aren't being heard and your prayers aren't going through. Not only are we facing situations in our personal lives that seem like they are just, we're just stuck there, but we as a nation are facing dark days. Every day it seems like something new has been thrown at us. Every day it seems like the enemy is coming against us in one way or another, in our personal lives or in our nation or in our world. It's just seemingly all in chaos. There have been times that I have prayed and prayed and prayed and believed God and believed God and it seemed like things would never change. But it is in times like this that we need the word of God. The things that we are hearing and the things that we are experiencing are facts, but the word of God holds truth. And when we go to the word of God and read his truth, we can stand on that truth and believe God for the fulfillment of whatever is facing us. I've prayed in times past, as it says in Psalm 61, verses 1 and 2. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry out to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. And it would seem like my heart was overwhelmed. I was crying from the ends of the earth. And the only way I could believe and understand is because I had also read verse 3. And verse 3 has said, For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. Praise God, he has more ways than we can count to bring refreshing to us. If we will hold on this day, we're only promised a day at a time. And it seems like everything that comes against us, everything we are concerned about, everything we worry about, anything like that is always in a future time. It doesn't seem to be today that we're facing that thing. We know we can make it through today and we're giving one day at a time. And so we believe God for one day at a time. When we're least expecting it, God is already working on our behalf. Many, many times God is working in the background and we have no clue what is going on until God shows up and it is a finished work. I believe that even in our lives and in our nation today, God is working in the background. It seems like things have a, a, a greater hold and it seems like things are succeeding against us. But I have a God that we can trust, a God who is a shelter in the time of storm, a God we can lean on and depend upon. There's a scripture that has really meant a lot to us. Um, through the years when, when it seems like weeping has been enduring for a night, but I'm telling you, joy is coming in the morning. The word of God, though, comes around and says in Isaiah 30, 18, therefore the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you, and therefore he will be exalted that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice, Praise God for that word. The Lord our God is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. I have a story to tell you this morning. 24 years ago, this month, my son Daryl moved to Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth area, to be a part of a large ministry out there. God blessed him richly through the years, and he traveled the world with various ministers. But we had always been a very, very close family. And it was um, 
it was hard for my husband and I to see this and to handle this and to experience it when we would only see him maybe two times a year at the most. And for many years, it was one time a year at Christmas time. But during that time, thank God that we had our daughter, Debbie, and her three precious daughters, Amanda, Jessica, and Rebecca. But there was still always a piece missing. And we were always happy to have Daryl home and, when, and to come back. Six months after he left, I was praying for him. And I was in our family room praying. And I felt like God dropped in my heart. There is coming a day Daryl will, re will return as quickly as he left. And I took that word of God and I w wrote it on a yellow piece of paper. I can remember that vividly and I stored that yellow piece of paper away. I stored it away so well, I can't find it these days. But anyway, the days passed by, the weeks ticked on, the months ticked on, and the months became years. And all of this time, I'm believing the word of God that one day he would return, even as quickly as he left. But as the days would go, and there would be those days when I would feel like it would never happen, and I would feel like I had been forgotten by God. I would feel like he wasn't hearing my prayer. And then I would wonder, did I really hear a word from God? We go through those trying times when it will be tested and it will be tried. Do we believe God? Do we believe his word? Do we believe what he has said? Do we believe the word of God? And the bottom line is, yes, we believe. My husband went to be with the Lord in, in November of 1999. And, and then the days and the weeks and the months piled up as I uh, was facing life alone as a widow. And I would continue to pray and believe. And then there would be those days, God, have you forgotten me? God, have you forsaken me? God, do you hear the prayer of this little widow woman? And I would try to be sorry for myself and make God sorry for me. Because you know, if he feels sorry for us, he will do something right. And during those years, as Daryl traveled the world, and he was seeing and meeting people all over the world, and God was blessing him, the days were sticking, still ticking by for me. But 24 years, or 23 years later, Daryl said something I thought I had almost given up hope for. He said, you know, I'm really having the thought that it's time for me to move closer to the family. That gladdened my heart. And he put his house on the market. The house was on the market days, weeks, months, and even a year and over a year and still nothing. He had over 200 showings. It was unbelievable. I used to tell him that Fort Worth ought to put him on the uh, sheet that said most places you ought to visit because he had so many going through his house. He had several contracts, but some way, somehow, they would fall through. Various things would happen and we would think, oh, this has got to be it. This is the end of his time in Texas. He's coming back home. And then something would happen and it would dash to the ground again and my hopes would be dashed once more, one more time. I was struggling except for the words, he will wait that he may be gracious to you. The last weekend in July of this year, my brother had been in Texas working for about a week and he called, before he went to Texas, he called Daryl and he said, Daryl, can I ride with you to Tennessee for the Morris family reunion the last weekend of July? And of course, Daryl was glad to have company on that long trip. And so Daryl and Dick arrived at the Morris family reunion in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And we were delighted to see him and had a wonderful time those three days in Pigeon Forge. And then came time that it was nearing for us to depart. And Daryl said, Mom, I'm going to go home with you for a couple days. And all this time, I was really suspicious about some things, but I didn't say a word because it was his story. 
So we started the trek back to Charlotte. Debbie, her three girls, Amanda, Jessica, and Rebecca, and Daryl and me, the six of us. We got back to Charlotte and went to a restaurant and was sitting in the restaurant. And as we first sat down, Debbie looked at her brother and hit the table and said, Daryl, what is going on with you? And Daryl leaned back in his chair and he said, I am no longer a resident of Texas. I sold my house last week. And as quickly as he left, he was back and we didn't know he was coming until, and that he was here to stay until that moment in that restaurant. God answered the prayer. God answered his word. God was true to his word. Even though there were days I had given up on that word ever coming to pass, he came back as quickly as he left. We did not know he was back for sure until that day sitting at that restaurant in Pineville, North Carolina. 23 and a half years long, God waited that he might be gracious to us. And today, Daryl is living 20 minutes from his sister and from me, instead of the 20 hours it took for us to get to his place in Dallas. Praise God for his word. I'm sharing this with you today. God is not a respecter of persons. I want to encourage you today, no matter how long you've been praying, no matter how long you have been believing, no matter how long you have been holding on, I say don't give up and don't give in. God is on the throne. God is merciful. He's more aware of all the situation than you are and that you will ever be. God is faithful, and I say that to you, that you will hold on, that you will be encouraged today, because Ephesians 3.20 tells us he will do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask, think, or dream, and that's a lot, isn't it? So praise God. When joy comes in the morning, it will be worth the wait, I'm telling you. Today, I'd like to ask you, do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? He is so wonderful. He is someone that we can lean on in times of stress, in times of storm. He's the one that supplies needs when we have no idea where it's coming from. He's the one that said, come all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He will take our burdens and our heavy laden uh, uh, lives, and he will give us rest. I'm telling you, there is not enough I can say about the Lord Jesus Christ. If you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior today, pray with me right now as I pray. Jesus, I receive you as my Savior and my Lord. I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I thank you for taking my sins at Calvary. I thank you that you shed your blood and you washed all my sins away past, present, and future, because when you washed my sins away on the cross that day, I wasn't even born. It was all for future sins to come, and I thank you, Father, for sending your Son. And Jesus, I thank you for your blood that was shed for me that day. I receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. And until next time.